everybody! Welcome to the Etola Jelly Art Tutorial. To make this painting, you will need watercolor paper, a pencil with an eraser, a larger paintbrush, a smaller paintbrush, and a black fine tip marker or black pen. Red, yellow, purple, and white watercolor paint, something to use as a painting palette, and something to put water in. First, we're going to start with our pencil by drawing a circle in the bottom right corner of our paper. This way we'll have room when we later draw the jellyfish's tentacles. If you have trouble drawing the circle, you can also use any circular shape such as an inverted glass as a guide. Now we're going to make two marks equally spaced along the circle. These will help us block out the next features we'll make. Using those two marks as a guide, we'll draw a smaller circle within the large circle to create the donut shape. Now let's add an additional line to one side of the inside of the donut shape, forming sort of like a crescent moon shape. This will later give more depth to the jellyfish. Now, halfway between those two circles we just made, we're going to make a third circle. It should look a little bit like a bullseye. Now I'm going to add another crescent moon shape around that center circle. Now we're going to divide our bullseye into a bunch of wedge-shaped sections by drawing lines radiating out from the central circle out to the outermost circle all of the way around the bullseye. You want to try to make these lines equally spaced from each other. They look kind of like the rays of the sun. Now using these lines we just made as a guide, I'm going to draw a sort of rounded off wedge shape between each one, leaving a little bit of space between them. They'll start to look kind of more like flower petals than sun rays. This tutorial seems very repetitive and has a lot of repetitive lines in it because jellyfish are what are called radially symmetrical, which means they're symmetrical around a circular shape rather than a line, as are humans and other mammals. Between each of those flower petal shapes, I'm going to make small lines connecting them slightly below the very top of the curve of the petals. This will give it sort of a gear effect, making it look like it has bumpy edges. Now I'm going to grab my eraser and erase the outer line in between each of those petals. So leaving the line we just made, but erasing the line we originally drew when we made the big circle. Now I'm going to block out where the tentacles will start. I'm going to draw some small ovals between each of these petal-like shapes. Focusing into the center of the jellyfish, I'm going to draw some semicircles between those two crescent shapes that we made around the smallest circle in the center. These crescent shapes won't go all of the way around that central circle, just in the space between those two crescent shapes. I'm going 
gonna draw one more circle on the inside of the smallest circle, slightly off center. And now that the hood or bell of the jellyfish is complete, we're gonna start drawing the tentacles. So we're gonna start in those small oval shapes we made earlier between the petal shapes around the hood or bell of the jelly and draw parallel curvy lines that end in a point. You want these lines to be pretty close together to make the tentacles very thin. Now I'm going to add another tentacle to the next small oval and I'm going to overlap it over the tentacle we just made. Don't worry about overlapping the tentacles right now because we'll fix them up later. And as I'm drawing these tentacles, I'm making them flow into the left upper corner of our paper where we left space for them before when we first started drawing the jellyfish. This can be kind of tedious and repetitive task, but if you take them one at a time, I'm sure yours will turn out great. You don't have to make them exactly how I did. I think it'd probably be easier for you to draw them however you feel is right for you. You can make them as complex or as simple as you like. Atola jellies are very cool members of the Ocean Twilight Zone community. They're also sometimes called the alarm jellyfish because they flash bioluminescence when they're being attacked by predators. Some scientists think that this is to deter the predators, and others think that it's used actually to attract predators of the predators they're being attacked by. The Atola jelly is a deep red color, which makes it almost invisible in the low light of the ocean twilight zone. This is because red light frequencies don't penetrate as deeply into the ocean as blue or yellow or green light frequencies. These jellyfish also have one slightly longer tentacle that scientists think they use to help capture prey. If you ever get lost or confused when making these tentacles, which I certainly did, just go back to the little ovals you made and figure out which ones you haven't put tentacles on yet, and just use that as a, a starting point for where to go. Just take one tentacle at a time. I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm going to erase the places where tentacles overlap. I'm going to start with the tentacles that I think would be on top of all the others, which would be the ones that are closest to us. And then I'm going to redefine the edges of them with my pencil. And you can go ahead and do this for all of your tentacles that overlap with other things, including the body or bell of the jellyfish.
Now we're going to grab our yellow watercolor paint, as well as our red watercolor paint, get our larger brush full of water. We're going to take our yellow paint and put it on that central area of the jellyfish, also filling in those little semicircles on the inside between those two crescents. We're going to take some more yellow and put it on the very edges of the jellyfish's bell. Now we're going to grab some red paint and put it in between the edges of the bell and that innermost circle, but not painting those small yellow semicircles. Don't worry about going over the tentacles, we'll take care of those later on. Now I'm adding a little bit of red paint in between those outer petal shapes. I'm going to take some more red paint and add it to the very, very outer edge of the jellyfish, leaving a little bit of yellow in between. This yellow will give the jellyfish more depth. I'm going to go in with a little bit more red paint to make that a bit more saturated. I'm going to grab our smaller brush, get some water, and start filling in the tentacles. I'm doing this with mostly red but a little bit of yellow to make kind of a dark orange. As you can see, I'm using a flat brush. so. I am moving it in a sideways motion with the long edge going along the tentacle. This helps me get a thinner line and gives me more control over the brush. And it's fine if your tentacles are slightly different colors from each other. I think that makes it look more interesting.
So unfortunately, my phone that I'm recording with ran out of space, so the video completely cut out for a little bit, but it didn't miss too much. Um, all I did really was just finish filling in the tentacles. Now I'm gonna grab my purple paint and my small brush and add some purple to the outer edge of the jellyfish's bell. On the very, very edge, I'm going to leave a little bit of the reddish pink color showing through. And this time, when applying the purple paint, I'm going to sort of dodge the tentacles as to not paint over them. I'm going to take some darker purple paint and fill in the gaps in between those petal shapes. Now I'm going to take a mixture of dark purple and red and fill in that smallest circle in the very center of the jellyfish. I'm still going to leave the circle around it yellow. Now I'm going to take my small brush again with that same dark red purple color and make an outline right below the yellow semicircles. I'm going to take that same color and make a few streaks going out from that dark red purple circle in the center. I'm going to grab just some water in my brush without any paint and blend those lines into the yellow background without completely erasing them. I'm going to take a little bit more of the dark red purple paint and make some little lines inside the yellow semicircles. I'm going to take a little bit more dark red paint and add some more color pops to the pointy ends of the petals. I'm also going to add a little bit more purple to the outside, since when it dried it came out lighter than I wanted it to. Again, dodging all the tentacles. I'm going to grab my white paint, and after waiting for my jellyfish to dry, I'm going to add some small highlights with my smaller brush to the outside of the bell. I'm doing this by adding small dots and streaks to the edges of each of the petal shapes. I'm going to add some small highlights to the center of the jellyfish as well, making some streak and dot shapes that overlap between the yellow portion and the dark red portion. This sort of makes it look like it has a clear jelly film over all of those colors. I'm going to grab my black fine tip marker or black pen and I'm going to add an outline to each one of the jellyfish's tentacles. This is also an optional step, but if you want your image to stand out a little bit more against the background, I think it could look nice. 
when you're doing this, take care to realize which tentacles are overlapping and when you should stop drawing a line and let the other tentacle go over it. Otherwise, the lines will cross and it will look pretty confusing. See there, I realized that that tentacle was being overlapped by the other one, so I stopped the lines and started drawing the other tentacle over it. This is also kind of a repetitive task, but I find it kind of relaxing, because you already know where the shapes are, you're just outlining them. I just thought of this, but this would also work really well if you had a red pen or thin red marker. I think that would also look pretty cool. And our final tentacle is done! Now I'm going to take my same pen and outline the outside of the bell, drawing the contours of those sort of gear-like bumps. This may be a little bit tricky behind all of the tentacles, but do your best. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm going to take the pen and outline one of the crescent shaped circles. Then I'm going to use a sort of dotting technique to outline those yellow semicircles. So I'm just doing little dots in a line very close to each other. I'm going to use the same technique to outline the petal shapes. I like using dotted lines when I don't want a super harsh line, but I want some definition. Then I'm going to do some more dots around that more reddish portion.
I'm going to grab my eraser and erase all of the pencil lines that are left over. And we're finished! Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed drawing this Atola jellyfish. Bye!